Hello Black, episode 160. Back at it. You know, I think that again we said we're gonna be more consistent and we've been more consistent. You know, we gave you uh, October 7th, part one, October 8th, part two. Make sure you tap in with those very important episodes if you ain't tapped in with them yet. Go to Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify. You feel me? Go tap in with that. Uh, listen to it and re-listen to it and, uh, you know, apply uh, the lessons learned into your analysis that you're having right now. So go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Pod. Support the work. Support, you feel me, some new African people who was doing work, some new African Muslims who was doing work and uh, in the community and trying to create free political education for the people, man. So patreon.com slash Pod. Here we are, brother. One week away. The countdown has started. <laughs> One week away. Each second we get closer to the next president. Some people aren't of wrong. The United though. States of America. Some people aren't wrong when they talk about the importance of this uh election. I think even uh they were saying this is gonna be the most expensive uh election since twenty twenty. So that shows you, right, where people are um where people find themselves as it pertains to the future of this so called nation. I mean, each election going to get more expensive, though, with inflation. That's <laughs> <So, laughs> the most expensive. That's a fair point. But also, you know, like, I mean, as we see, people are putting billions upon billions upon billions of dollars uh, into these campaigns. Yeah. Especially, right, because Kamala was introduced as the uh, Democratic Nominee. candidate in Via. what? In July. So it's, they ran up a bag quick. They ran it up quick and, you know. Some might say there was a coup that was ran through the Democratic <laughs> Party and Kamala was fast-tracked to the presidential nominee real fast. I mean, by way of fact, that is true because she didn't have to do any of the early campaign you know, like all the other... Like they pretty much nominated her without and got all the endorsements before you know, they even had the convention. But democracy. So that was interesting. Democracy, democracy right? choice, voting, electoral process. <laughs> I, for one, cannot wait till this entire thing is over. Not simply because I'm tired of seeing the ads, but I mean, we talked about this. Y'all should revisit um, episode, what is it, like 157, where it is a, um expansion on the episode we did years ago saying Kamala Harris ain't for black people. Um, where in that episode, part two, we talked about the pandering that she's doing, uh, that she really from the very onslaught of her campaign, like she hit the ground running with that shit. The uh, Megan Thee Stallion, the Beyonce uh, now, Bishop Magic Don Juan. <laughs> like that was a very shocking one. And then Man, she had Glorilla do. About that say way. recently she has a Glorilla endorsement or whatever. And it's just yeah, it's actually very sad. We were talking about um how it shows us what uh all. Shit, I guess like what the Democratic Party thinks of its black constituents to mm -hmm. where they can just prop uh, public or not, uh, I guess, like social and viral moments in front of you as a means to get you to vote. Like, it's damn near like how you do kids, you know, like how you do like little things to manipulate kids to do stuff like. I mean, it's really like this almost like Sims. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the video game <laughs> yeah. like it's like reality television meets video games in the way propaganda is and control and like essentially just manipulation of people's minds into voting into this electoral system like you literally have the biggest quote unquote celebrities all just like vote for Kamala you know we love I'm our celebrities women I'm for children I'm for families Beyonce, vote for Kamala, but mind you, Kamala Harris is locked up children as a district, district attorney, <laughs> as locked up families as, dist as district attorney, had truancy laws, so if you didn't go to school, your parents was getting locked up, but wants to talk about she's for the quote-unquote American family, is literally enacting a genocide against Palestinian people enacting genocide against Lebanese people, killing Muslims left and right, who wants to talk about family, children, and the, our future, quote-unquote, America. Like, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's like a reality TV show. Then she want to go blame black men. Like, oh, black men ain't voting for me. 
black men are the problem and then runs a campaign advertisement where it's popping balloons saying if you ain't voting for Kamala, you ain't. <laughs> that one was, I feel like, one of the more disrespectful ones. All of them have been very disrespectful. Like, okay, women on, to the to the youth, to the young black women, I know who very much love Megan Stallion and what she represents. I'm gonna have her perform at one of my campaign rallies. Then for black men, with the hypersexualization of us that's existed in time and memoriam, as it pertains to our relationship to Western subjugation, uh, what will make a man vote? The threat of never having sex again because he didn't vote. So I'm gonna run the little meme page, the little meme spot with the Balloon black pops. balloons. Like, oh, you six feet? Oh, you got a good job? Oh, okay, did you vote? Nope, pop, 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 pop. Like, if we know what scares a black man more than anything, it's not being able to have sex. <laughs> if we know that basically, what, is that not what they say? I think Spike Lee directed that. <laughs> nah, you know they had that little that little think tank. The white woman like, well, you know what's really hip these days? Mm-hmm. There's the balloon. <laughs> it was given. What was that Chicago? <laughs> what was the Chicago movie Spike Lee made? With oh, uh, not uh, you talk about. It was The Shy. No, The Shy is a show. <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, Chirac. 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 It was giving Chirac. Yeah, yeah. Before Kamala Harris in the election. But I mean, this is like the fact that. America is one large reality television show. Side note, <laughs> this nigga Mee's called America One Big Casino because they letting you uh, bet on who wins the election. <laughs> it's, it's, like that. We laughing. We say this all the time. We laughing, but it's not funny. That's how sick and demented and satanic the system is, though. Like, you're literally betting. People are betting on elections. And there's odds and... <sighs> Like Vegas is open for it. Chess is getting kind of tight. What I think about, I mean, if you think about, it, I mean, just like from an Islamic perspective, that's all, all, all types of levels of haram. Now you see why gambling is haram for us. <laughs> I mean, but why would you play with something like that? Why, like, we going because it why made would it you play game. play with something that so much of like when this all comes mm-hmm. down to what people forget so very often is like the millions upon, oh, he gonna say millions, yeah, millions upon hundreds of millions of people whose lives this is affect not just domestically. This is this. What happens here via the quote unquote electoral process doesn't just impact uh It impacts the world. It impacts, it impacts the world, everyone. bro. And Every, so for that to be made a human game, being on this world because of how powerful this uh, imperialist state of mm-hmm. America is the election affects everyone. That's why everyone is paying attention to, to it. From Russia to China uh, to the Islamic Republic of Iran, every nation state is paying attention to what's happening in America. Europe is like, okay, we have to see what happens here. Because it's going to affect us as Europe mm-hmm. based off of the quote-unquote American election. You know, so this is... Uh, but the, the lack of actual political acumen and political understanding of actual political participation in this country is actually uh, very, very, I mean, alarming, to mm-hmm. say the least. Yeah. You know, because people think part, political participation is just simply uh, casting a ballot uh, for the United States president, but people aren't actually actively uh, participating day in and day out in politics. One hundred percent that inform this how this government is working, or how it isn't working, and what we're actually doing against it. Yeah, um, like I said, I'm ready for it to end because not only am I tired of uh, the propaganda that's being pushed forced, being forced upon us daily. Not only am I tired of uh, being turned into, as I, I speak, I guess I'm speaking in terms of uh, the entire new African population of being reduced to memes and viral social media moments as a ploy to get us to engage in a very backward system of the electoral process. But um, it's something that's, you know, uh, revolutionary theoreticians have been speaking to for a long time, like a Huey Newton, like a George Jackson, where they'd be saying like, you know, repression raises consciousness um, and it was something that you maybe it hasn't come up on this podcast too often, but it's something that you've been naming for a long time, especially within like our cadre spaces. Is like once this ends, people are going to be looking for somewhere to go, right? And so I'm very much happy for this cycle to be over, so that people can once I mean, people are already starting to get there, and you know the fifth hasn't even happened yet, where you know you're starting to see people who six months ago were singing more of an integration, who for three or four years have been pushing very, quote unquote, like revolutionary ideology, but you see them starting to make a, who were making a shift and pandering for, you know, socialist candidates and third party 
who are now saying like, oh, we need to be worried about what happens after the smoke clears. Whereas someone like I was saying, like you have been saying within at least our cadre space for a very long time, like, hey, we need to have our organization ready and on point because people are going to become disillusioned when they realize like, okay, some of the theoreticians that we were following, some of the folks who were pushing ideology that we thought we aligned with were just trying to um, shuffle us in to this electoral process that, again, isn't going to yield any benefit to us, um, that is actually uh, controlled opposition, counter-revolutionary. And people are going to realize, like, wait, all these billions of dollars that's been put into this campaigns, put into this uh, process, and we still can't find a way to get ourselves out of the very uh, exploitative, uh, marginalized material conditions that we find ourselves in. And people are going to be, what, disillusioned and are going to want something that has nothing to do with that. And this is where, you know, Hopefully, <laughs> we I mean, see the organization hoping, grow. Hoping to uh, open people's imagination to how things can actually change in a society. You mm-hmm. know, I, some people might be like, "Oh, why are you talking about the third party? Uh, why are you talking about the Green Party? Why are you talking about uh, PSL uh, and their election campaigns?" You know, they're supposed to be on the left, quote unquote. We need nigga. This, why waste all that money? We need this unity, and that's that's my thing. Why waste the money? Why waste the resources? Why waste the time? Why disillusion people to believing that their vote can actually stop a genocide, that their vote can actually uh, change things in the United States of America, right? Like with each uh, election, it's just bringing people closer and closer <laughs> to their own demise by telling people to believe in the system, by telling people that your vote actually matters, that a vote for a Jill Stein actually matters, that a vote for a Claudia, that a vote for uh, a Cornell or whoever jester is running for mm-hmm. this office that it actually matters and it's actually going to change something. It's a two-party system, but as uh, 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 Nire talks about, it's, it's an illusion. Uh, you know, it has this two-party, but in typical American fashion, it's, it's just an illusion. Mm-hmm. You know, of, of the extravagance of the quote-unquote American political process. So what does that mean for a third party, right? So people who are seeing this third party, what I say is just theater, nonsense, and counterinsurgent strategy, uh, meant to get people into the electoral process, people are going to be like, okay, this did nothing. Again, here we are for the umpteenth time of a Jill Stein trying to run for president. Ain't the first time. Probably ain't going to be the last time she running. Yeah. Nothing has happened. Yeah. There's, 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 there hasn't been any change. So the question is, like, how do we actually make change? How do we actually build programs in our community, institutions in our community, invest our time actually with the people and organizing the people towards revolutionary change? Versus seeing this ballot as something that's going to liberate us. How will a ballot stop a genocide? Let's just be honest. How is a ballot (laughs) going to stop the racism of this country that it is founded on? How is a ballot going to stop the oppression of colonized people? It won't. So why are people trying to lead people to believe that that is how change happens? But that's the thing, you know, even with these... uh, "Quote unquote," uh, uh, Kamala supporters. Is that chicken gonna come home to roost at some point? Because you can't just keep doing this over and over again, voting for evil, and that evil not come to yourself. <laughs> you know uh, and that, that 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 stuff is gonna come knocking on your door eventually, because these politicians, Trump and Kamala, man, they was both two evil people. That's the facts. That the system produces two candidates, quote unquote, <laughs> and gives us this illusion of choice because we don't even choose the president. The Electoral College does. And we've seen what's exactly what's happening is the continuation of this American empire, no matter who is uh, in seat of the presidency. Right. And that president essentially. How much power does that president actually have? Like if we're being completely honest, and I know I think we said it in a previous episode, if we look at the case of Joe Biden right now, Joe Biden is uh, barely functional in a cognitive way. But this country is still running. The empire is still running. The military apparatus uh, is still running. So who are these uh, deep, people say deep state factors that is actually running this country? And if we look at it, look where the money is. It's the corporations, it's the corporate intelligence agency that is uh, making these choices um, of who becomes the next president. And that's why I think we've seen this uh, infighting, you know, uh, inside the so-called United States of America, inside of its uh, political machine, its corporate machine that's happening, uh, because a lot of the corporate uh, 
backers don't like Trump. I think it's just very evident. If you look at how campaigns are being funded, you know, Kamala is getting a lot of this big corporate money because she represents in many ways the uh, epitome of neoliberalism, uh, you know, in the United States of America, while uh, Trump is, you know, still pretty much still an American imperialist, but he represents something else. You know, he represents a, almost a re-industrialization uh, of the United States rather than this, uh, it's still globalization, and, and but it, it represents a different version of it. Yeah, when you speak of these, all these facts that you just named, uh, it further proves our point of delusion, and it also makes me think of two other points, right? Um, like one, we have to remember where we are every time we get to this point of folks trying to sell us a dream of uh, integration and democracy, right? We are in a white nationalist settler colony uh, governed by that dominant ideology of white supremacist settler colonialism, right? Um, there are, what, like nearly 400 million people in the United States? And do not get it confused where the majority of these people lie, right? And so when you understand that the majority of these people, whether they want to see the very outright, outright front-facing fascism of a Donald Trump, or they want to see the liberal neoconservatism of uh, Kamala Harris, where you might push civil and human rights, but you are very much, uh, very much believe in capitalism, and you very much uh, believe in United States intervention, uh, neo-colonial subjugation abroad. Right, that's the ideology that governs this nation on either side, right or uh, dem democratic or republican. So, what does any quote-unquote revolutionary in their right mind look like? Trying to encourage people to stir up and shake up the electoral process when you recognize those are the two dominant ideologies. Why not spend your time and resources? Because we've never seen the amount of money that's been put into some of these, in into the Democratic Party by this quote-unquote left that's been put into some of these third parties by the quote-unquote radical left. We haven't seen that type of money put into these campaigns. We haven't seen the type of money and manpower that's been put into these type of campaigns, put into community control and institutions. People are organizing harder, hitting the streets harder for these third parties, for these Democrats that they do in their own communities, bro, under the guise of what? Revolution. That's backwards, bro. That's completely black backwards. And I think, what did you call some, you call some, uh, what did you, lunatic. This is like, you, like, you got to be a lunatic to do something like that, bro. I mean, these are people who just are, I think by definition, social Democrats. <laughs> you feel me like they, they want a reformed America. Uh, they might use some anti-imperialist talking points here and there, but they still believe that uh, America in its uh, constitution can be reformed. You they know? still believe in the system. You know, they still, uh, they aren't as anti, quote unquote, imperialist as they like people to actually believe. They aren't. They still believe in two state solutions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they like to prop up other people's liberation movements to essentially uh, act as if uh, they support them, but they use it uh, in many ways in a very trickery type of way to get people to buy into their process. But like you said, these people are raising all this money. <laughs> Uh, doing all these talks, doing all these gatherings, but what type of uh, resources are actually going into the community? And those are the questions that we have to ask. And these, I think this is the first time in a while people are like, nah, we, we abandoning both of these people. But then the question is, is what do we do? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we then put our resources into the community? You know, mm -hmm. and that's where organization comes. And let's just be honest, like, there ain't many strong organizations. So that has to be also the call of like developing strong organizations within the community that are pillars in the community that are building the institutions that are needed to essentially run a nation, run a commune, if you want to call it that, or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever term you want to use to call your community. That resources need to go in there and the community needs to be uh, highly uh, and effectively organized to be able to take care. You know, uh, and, and that's how we can begin to build the institutions that we need uh, to not only uh, survive, but go on the offensive for our own humanity. So. It was funny because I think we've been having our different 
talks offline around like our predictions and I know before when they first announced Kamala as the yeah. as the uh candidate, I'm like, fuck, I ain't gonna lie. I think she can pull it off just because I believe she's gonna galvanize uh the new African community in a way that hasn't been done before, especially coming off the very like just like all the DEI stuff that has just like taken root amongst the quote unquote left, um, from the left to the liberals over the last couple of years. Uh excuse me. But like we were saying at the end of the day, I have to remember where we are. And this is uh very much a white nationalist fascist country. And I would say at this point, because of the failure um of the Biden administration to create um, a strong welfare state here domestically, I think even the more liberal neoconservatives of the past will probably at this point find themselves more aligned with Trump's like hard line America first uh, fascism, right? Where you have him really set forth on like industrializing uh, America again, right? Like you were talking yesterday um, when you were saying like, okay, we might see our, this country might see itself again in a, uh, a state where it was during the Civil War where you had um, the Republicans pushing, you know, industrializing America, making America very strong. Uh, and I, I I think this is where we found ourselves again, right? Like, I've even seen people who are like more liberal, like, man, I ain't worried about what's going over there. I live in America. I got to feed my kids. I got to, you feel me? Like, this is where people find themselves as a result of the current domestic terrain. And um, where Kamala is more so, you know, saying things like, I want to give... I want to center the middle class and I want to give uh, workers a chance to have a seat at the table, which is nothing more than uh, liberal capitalist uh, rhetoric, right? The majority of the people, again, want to see like, bro, what jobs is going to be here? People can get behind the rhetoric of why are we having all these imports and all these countries across all these countries across the world are making money off, off Americans. We should be making some of that money, right? Like that's what something people see what liberalism has gotten. Like with this type of shit, right? And people still associate Trump with money. Even amidst that national pandemic, right? People associate Trump with putting money in their pockets, even if it was a thousand dollars here, two thousand dollars here, thousand dollars here. Like he has those type of things that he can point to. Meanwhile, right? Like although I think it can be a little confusing sometimes when you look into some to some of the economic policies put forth by Biden and Kamala. Like if you're not an econo- if you're not a economist, but like common sense to show you like things are just bad out here. Whether you're talking in relation to uh, shrinkflation, whether you're talking to the relationship of just the basic rise in the cost of goods, like people not fucking with that. Whether, again, there might be, uh, there are just a bunch of political things at play that motherfuckers is like, hey, we might as well. This nigga talking about bringing jobs over here. He's talking about uh, incentivizing people uh, the rich, the billionaires to build industry and people is just no longer, I think, can they fall back so much on the identity shit. It's like, yo, what can you actually do for us materially? I mean, that's the thing. A lot of Kamala's campaign is essentially been based off of like this never Trump rhetoric that was created, you know, especially in 2020, you know, uh, with that election with Joe Biden. Anyone but Trump. Anyone but Trump. Right. So Trump was essentially created as this new uh, American boogeyman uh, who is out to get you uh, out to do everything bad to you. Uh, but in reality, Joe Biden is a boogeyman, too. <laughs> in reality, Obama's that boogeyman. <laughs> Kamala Harris is the, they cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you can't run a campaign just on calling another man a Nazi. You can't run a campaign on just saying, oh, never Trump. Oh, he is out for revenge. Oh, he is out to uh, do his own personal agenda and not be for the American people. Like, you can't run a campaign on that. The Harris campaign has failed to put forth a real strong, quote unquote, I mean, I think this is just objectively speaking, me putting my uh, political science hat on. <laughs> They have re- they have not ran a strong campaign. They haven't. That's just the a fact of the matter. They haven't produced strong policies. They haven't produced. She's gone left and right and switched up her stances on different policies. Mm-hmm. So people are like, "What is going on with Trump? You know what you're gonna get. 
All right, and I think w- what we're gonna see, we're gonna see a lot more voters shift to the Trump side than we've ever seen before. I mean, economically, doesn't Trump make more sense? There, I, so I was reading an article the other day, right? And if I could summarize some of what I read, I was reading two articles, right? One that I want to bring up um, a little bit later. But all right, so like when you think about their economic plans, I think the simplest way to put it is Trump is saying, like, look, it, I want to give tax breaks to the rich as a means to incentivize them producing their goods here versus going abroad to produce their goods, right? Which could be jobs over here. Kamala is saying, look it, I'm going to tax them, but I'm gonna give them subsidies as a means to maybe give jobs over here, right? Um, again, it's- <laughs> I mean, Kamala is very much a part of this like neo, this new form of a ruling class mm-hmm. that is not located in America, right? So what I mean by that, it's a global uh, ruling class where that passport ain't everything. That American citizenship ain't everything. This is part part of like a a globalization uh, agenda of the uh, neoliberal economy. That's where Kamala is coming from. Where Trump is more like, hey, man, we got a still a globalist, right? Uh, But is very much more nationalist in terms of development. Yeah, and that's where I would say, like, you were making the point earlier in terms of uh, some of these big companies that are backing Kamala are people who do want to extract capital and labor uh, through her form of globalism versus, you know, again, Trump is saying, nigga, America first, then through probably our strong military presence, we can subject everyone else to our will and to our might. Yeah. Uh, One other thing is, I was bringing up articles I was reading, as why people are trying to say uh, vote for Kamala. It was like, look, they both support genocide, basically speaking to their stance on Israel, right? Where you have Trump saying like, hey, nigga, Joe Biden should get out the way and let Israel finish the job as it pertains to their genocide attempts. Mm. Uh, And Kamala is saying like, hey, I want to return the hostages. I want to have peace amongst the people. And I do believe in uh, Israel's right to exist, right? Both fascism, both supporting genocide. Uh, He said, so they both support genocide, but one is a fascist in terms of what he'll do domestically here. But we have to continue to look at what's been happening under the Biden administration. Biden put more police out. Nigga! Fascism is here (laughs) under any administration. It's America. But that's the way they play with your Mm -hmm. brain. You feel me? It's like, look, okay, they both support genocide, but one is a fascist. They're both fascists. This is one nation and one government (laughs) and one corporation. (laughs) You know? And I think that's where people have to really look at it. That's why I say, hey, for us and our objectives as trying to build revolutionary culture and revolutionary programs, Trump makes it easier for us. Because removes the veil. It removes the, <laughs> removes you the know, uh, and the repression that uh, comes with the Trump presidency, the, the heightened uh, hard line in your face, Americanism and racist stances, uh, people are much more capable of seeing that as a problem and that we have to do something about that versus seeing Kamala Harris being the first black woman uh, to get elected and seeing it as a, a historical momentous day for the quote unquote American Because it is people. progress, right? As it, pertain- as it pertains to integration. Again, it's progress for the neoliberal machine, the identity politics machine. That's what I'm saying. You know? So that's why they're able to steal like that, you know, that like play the play the game, slide of hand, trickery type thing. Like, okay, before when y'all the when y'all couldn't vote and y'all was the mammies and the wet nurses, look at you now, head of state. Anything is possible. You know, and again, getting more of that. That's really a really good fascist ploy, though, because people no, also is. don't really know how to critique women without the misogyny. So it's like anytime you say something, you could, you feel me, like on some for real shit. That's how they'll get niggas. That's why I'm like, that's the reason why I was like, okay, it does make a little bit more sense for the Western Empire. Uh, but it, again, you know. Uh, yeah, but again, I think there's also those uh, internal contradictions and issues that the United States has that a Kamala can't solve. And I'm coming from January 6th. <laughs> oh, mama, like, nobody <laughs> want to see that. Right. <laughs> There's well, certain Obama things was, that Kamala can't solve. The left ain't gonna go storm the White uh, House. Trump presidency <laughs> uh, good. is able to contain a certain internal element uh, that is, you know, the sleeping giant in this country. It is the right wing fascist 
uh, new conservative libertarian groups that will do anything for this country, will do anything for American nationalism, and have proved that any time they want something done, they will do it. Well, Kwame Ture talked about it, man. They don't want abortion clinics. What do they do? The, what does the far right do? We know what they've done. I'm not going to say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we know what they've done. They do it through violence, and they will continue to do it through violence. So a Trump presidency limits that uh, internal issue, especially when externally America and its imperialist power is under the most threat that it's ever been. Yeah, I would say it's, it's under its most threat. It's under the biggest crisis in some ways it's ever been. Now, it's still a very powerful force, <laughs> which we could see. Uh, but it, it has different fronts that are opened up that are trying to remove some of its hegemony. Yeah. You if, if you think strategically, it makes more sense to have to deal with the whines and complaints of the left versus the very yeah. front line, hard actions of the right. Especially when considering the fact that Trump can make a lot of sense for American uh, nationalism as it pertains to like uh, economically, and mm -hmm. he will uh, continue to put forth the very imperialist uh, policies, uh, whether you're talking about uh, in West in Western Asia or uh, the Sahel region. Like he's he's with, he's with all of that. Mm -hmm. He's with it all. So okay, you can still push forward your globalization agenda, and you can have a little bit more of a stronghold at home, right? Because again, for the left, most part, the left ain't finna do nothing but complain like they've been doing, tweeting, fucking uh, fear-mongering and, and be pessimistic. I knew it. I mean, the left strategy is pretty much name-calling. <laughs> Dead ass, they ain't finna point, bust a grape. Without actually, you feel me, producing anything. For and they won't organize. You and they won't organize. So if it's you look in, you, just like we got our analysis, they got some of the best and brightest minds that this world got to offer and be like, hey, Realistically, what are these people going to do? Besides next year when Gavin Newsom, besides in four years when Gavin Newsom is running, go hit the polls again. I mean, that's why sometimes for me, but I'll, I'll go listen to the what 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 are, the, what are these big corporations saying? What is the Federal Reserve saying? What is Wall Street saying? Mm -hmm. Wall Street saying ain't much. Kamala or Trump ain't much going to change. <laughs> we still go raking the profit. That was done, you know. Again, this war is about profit. Even if they quote unquote uh, lose a war, it's profitable. Because what are they doing for the defense industries? What are they doing for new development contracts? What is IKEA doing selling new furniture in Ukraine for? That's the thing about war is it creates new uh, markets for capital mm -hmm. to be followed through. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. As new development is going to be needed in <laughs> war torn zones and when. The United States of America essentially owns the means of production. <laughs> and when it's time to cash for half of the world <laughs> on those bonds and them stocks that they didn't sell. You know, <laughs> so my prediction: Trump by a landslide. Trump is going to win. That's still my prediction. If Trump doesn't win. I'm I'm against both of them. Two <laughs> genociders. But if Trump doesn't win, there's powers that be that do not want a Trump in president as a president. No, you're saying you're saying if Trump doesn't win, it's because of certain powers that don't want to see him there. Yeah. Certain deep state, certain certain corporate actors mm -hmm. uh, that are trying to make sure that you know because Trump is bad for him. Uh, that's my prediction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we I a know couple people, people might not like that taking what I said. I, mean, I don't see but, nothing wrong with what you're saying. It's an analysis. That's, that, you're not that's saying my, I. Yeah, it's an analysis. Uh, I think there's, you know, there's certain people who not do not want to see him win. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm. I don't know why I was about to say I'm excited to see, but like I'm, I just want to see how this thing plays out. One thing I do before we end, I am interested in seeing a one day like a study that can be done on like this kind of epoch in time where how every four years they can engineer this type of uh, participation in the electoral process despite all the very real material that's put in front of us as a means to disinvest over the years post shit, uh, the Civil Rights Act, right? Like how are people still this suffering from this amount of cognitive dissonance, right? The same way that Fanon put forth in like Wretched of the Earth, the psychology 
of uh, the colonized and the colonizer, we're going to have to study. Like, there's going to need to be real scientific research on like what was happening in the brains of the masses of the people to get them to participate in something that showed them over and over again that it does nothing. I mean, it's programming and it's media programming and, and you know, it's uh, it's a result of shark. <laughs> For real. <laughs> For real. Like, 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 I really need it, bro. Because we're talking about a people who worship capital. We're talking about a people who worship celebrities. Yeah. We're talking about a people who worship sports teams. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a people who worship consumerism, mm-hmm. a people who worship partying. Mm-hmm. And when you have all of these figures who are who you worship telling what you, you think to do left, something. What do you think the left worships? Same thing. <laughs> Megan the Stallion, Beyonce, well, LeBron. What, what is the third party worship? Jill Stein. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm real though. Like, okay, I mean, it's, it's very clear what those people worship, like the the right, and the left. But like, what is? Well, I guess like Democrats and Republicans. I, I was, I, st- I mean, the Green Party is still on the left. I yeah. would say, you know, they still uh, very much are believing in in a consumerist, uh, materialist framework of like capital. They through just the guys want, of revolution though. They want it. They want it through the ballot. You know, mm-hmm. like they believe in like a. What I would say, like a bourgeoisie, the proletariat. Mm-hmm. Like, they still very much want these American things. They just want it to be better for them and to be a, a better America for the world. Niggas ain't unquote. really ready to return to the commune like they say they is. You feel me? They ain't ready to go <laughs> <ready. certain> away. <laughs> yeah, they ain't ready. You know, they, they ain't ready to go up in the, in the, into, the, into the hills and have to eat frogs and stuff like that. <laughs> like, they ain't ready for that. We want that. We want that comfortable revolution. But I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. They still buy into America more than they're willing to admit. Yaki Ben, you know what I'm saying? More American than we want to we want to acknowledge. You know, so I think it's it's a, it's a result of that programming uh, that leads people to to voting for these things. You know, to being told, okay, Glow Rilla said this. I listen to her song ten times a day. Based off of that, like from a psychological perspective, the my person who I, I we see how fan culture is here. Download the consciousness. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Based off of that, that's why that's why they have them do it. You know what I'm saying? They get the celebrities. They, you feel me? It's like, that's why, man, you know, Usher, man, he got blackballed or they had something on his ass and Usher was up there chucking and jiving for Kamala. That Diddy shit. They have a way of orchestrating this. You know? So it's like, all right, your, your favorite singer endorses somebody. Hey, man. Ain't that crazy how like you someone actually can not convince thinking. you to do something? Someone can say, okay, this person said, I'm not even going to do my yeah. research. I'm not even, and then it's, so I was talking to uh, somebody about this. Then they make it so difficult. Like I was looking into one of the props and I had to read so much to understand what that thing was actually saying. And you, you were someone who has political acumen and has the time to read it. Right? Well, it took me like 30 minutes of research. Right. Now, I remember is, uh, back when ABC, uh, we did a proposition guide. Hours and hours and hours of research. Because you're having uh, essentially funnel your way through, like, because it's like different political action committees and different things that are funding it. Then you got to see who these PACs really are and what their interests are and what they vote like. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and it's very tricky. You know, there's something going around right now called Empower Oakland. I don't know if you've got. Yeah, I seen that. You oh feel me? God. They, they is people. Whistle. You feel me? Who are talking about they like on the? You know, they're trying to use the language like empowerment, but they is far right. And they on the right. They they are, it's a right wing conservative class, and that's also something we got to talk about. Some black folks is right wing and conservative, mm-hmm. <laughs> and more people are going to start moving that way because the Democratic Party has failed to do anything. So that's our problem as people is we don't think, mm-hmm. we don't comprehend. So it's like okay, because the Democrats we have two choices: Democrats and Republicans. Democrats ain't doing nothing for us. I'm gonna go to the Republicans. Republicans Basically. might be like Republicans ain't doing nothing for me as a black person. I'm gonna go become a black Democrat mm-hmm. versus saying, "Hey, I'll, the people, I'm gonna be for the people." You know, but again, that's I guess that's, that's our role. You know, but I still think the Democrats is trying to wash they wash the neoliberal identity politics out. That's still one of the theories I have is that they're trying to get rid of that. It's gonna fail with Kamala. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It failed with Hillary, uh, and they need new leadership in the party and that's why they want Gavin Newsom because then Gavin Newsom is going to come in like oh man I cleaned up California we had the Olympics we had no homeless 
you feel me? He's going to be that person who is more, again, the, the center. So it's like, essentially, the Democratic Party is a conservative party. Mm-hmm. It's moving, <laughs> like, it ain't no, there's no progressiveness in it. If there ever was, right? Yeah. It's just moving, you know, so I think that's part of the reshaping of the American, quote unquote, political scene is this, like, man, they getting that white strong man back, man. <laughs> getting that white strong man back, like, man, make America great, whether it's Gavin Newsom or DeSantis. <laughs> that's what it all come down to, man. You got to ask yourself, how you like your fascism? Hot or with ice? Free to land. <laughs> 